Du. Du hast. Du hast nicht. Du, du hast. Du hast nicht. Ich bin. <laughs> Was it Blue Monday, man? I don't, I don't know. Du hast. Felix. Anyway, it's uh, Sunday. The uh, February 13th. And this is for the February 19th fight for the WBA middleweight title. Again, uh, Felix Sturm against Ronald Hearns. And like I said, it's February 19th coming up there. Trying to catch these up, get a little bit ahead of myself. And uh, going in this, I'll obviously I'll break down both fighters. And then we will go, um, I'll give my prediction afterward. Uh, the first one we're going to start with will be Ronald Hearns. And he's uh, 26 and 1, 20 knockouts. You're looking at a 74% knockout ratio. Uh, you know he's 6'3". He's, you know he's 32 years old though. 6'3". He's uh, got a 6, 73 inch reach, which isn't that great for being 6 foot 3. You know if you're 6 3, you would think more in that 77. But you know he's 73, so it's a little more compact, a bit short. Uh, he's the son of Thomas Hearns. And as you would expect, he's got a bit of a chin like Thomas Hearns as well, because he was uh, knocked out by Harry Yorgi. And uh, but he also has a bit of an electric right hand like his father did as well. So going into this, he's very limited when it comes to experience. He had ten amateur fights, so if you add the twenty-seven, you know he's only got thirty-seven actual fights. Um, his father wouldn't let him, you know, fight amateur. He wanted him to get a degree, you know, go to school and get a degree, and great for him, but at the same time, when Tommy Hearns is your dad, you think, you know, I'm not saying he didn't learn anything in the gym, but he didn't let him go to the gyms and stuff like that. Told him not to train him, let him stay in school, get his job done. Anyway, you know, he's got solid power, obviously. You, you don't get the 75% without having that. But as we said, you know, he's got the limited uh, experience. He's only got the one 12-round fight and uh, one 10-round fight. I think he got knocked out in the 10-round fight. Anyway, very solid fighter. He lost to the one top fighter that he did fight. And uh, that was the Harry Yorgi. And the Harry Yorgi's not known for his knockouts. He's under 40%. Um, he's got a very good jab. He uses that uh, more to keep distance. And he sets up everything off the jab. If he's throwing a hook, if he's going to the body. Everything is off that jab. And everything else that he throws is really set up so he can fire that right hand. Uh, he fights tall. His D needs work because that left hand is always low. He he uh, lead, he has a nice lead right hand. He will work the body, but he moves straight back and he doesn't really throw from a lot of angles. Um, he pulls his hands back low after throwing punches as well. And when I say that, he'll fire the shot out. You guys have seen enough of these. He fires the punch out, drops his hand down, and then pulls it back up again. As opposed to coming straight out like this. You know, if you're here, that's one thing. But if you're here, you see, every time you, you know, there's that time frame where you can be countered, you can be hit, you can get hurt. And that doesn't bode well unless you like to get hit in the face. If that's your bag, you know, then that's the perfect thing for you to do. Um, you know, he needs a little more experience, but when you start talking about being 32 years old, you know, who knows how much more experience you're going to be able to get quality experience. I mean, normally when you're at 32, you've got 35, 40 pro fights under your belt, somewhere in that area. And you had an extensive amateur career. But, you know, not all fighters have to have that. I mean, and he's definitely got the genes. His father fought into, like, his 40s, so, you know, it could happen. He could get better. And I, I don't want to say he won't. But you got to have the questions. Over to Felix Stern. You know, he's uh, 32. He's in his prime. He's 34, 2, and 1. He's got uh, 14 knockouts, 38%. Not a massive amount of power. Um, but why don't we know about him? 18 of his fights are for, were for titles. Or are for titles. You know, um, his two losses, one was to Oscar De La Hoya, which we know he got robbed on. And the other one was to Castileo. Castileo? Castileo? And he avenged that loss. He fought the guy and beat him. So you're really looking at a guy, I mean, theoretically could have just the one loss on his record, and he avenged it. You know, nobody knocks Lennox Lewis for, Lennox Lewis for losing a fight. You feeling me? I mean, he had 
three title reigns as the middleweight champion, two times title reign as the WBA champ, one time as WBO. This time, he's this current reign, he's had eight title defenses. Nine total. And I'm not counting when you win the title, I'm talking defending the title. So he's had nine total title defenses coming into this. Why do we not know about him? Well, you start looking, um, you look at Randy Griffin, Jamie Pittman, uh, Koji Sato, Alcoba. These guys are on his record, and these are guys that he's had defenses against. So I can see why. And then you have a guy like Sergio Martinez that suddenly blows up on the screen, and he's almost a forgotten guy. Well, in the States, I'm not saying that for Germany or in Europe. But in the States, you don't really hear about Felix Stern. I mean, he beat Sebastian Sylvester, which, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, Sebastian's a cool name. But he beat him, and he's the IBF champ. So when you start talking about the champion of the division, everybody's so quick to say, oh, it's Sergio Martinez. But I'm telling you, if you're overlooking Felix Stern, you've got a problem. Because when you start looking at Felix Stern, you'll suddenly notice he's got very quick hands. He's got good foot movement, and he keeps a high defense. Okay? He throws one, two, three jabs. And off the jab, he works the hook, and he can throw the uppercuts in as well. Very good, polished boxer. He's kind of, uh, you know, very, very solid in there. I mean, and he don't, I mean, you know, he doubles up the hooks. He goes ahead of the body. He's always moving. He's always throwing combos. He's got a nice right hand. He's got that very high D. High D and he's got a lead right hand that is absolutely sneaky that flies in there. He works the body well. He's not a big inside fighter. Tends to freeze up when he is on the ropes and someone's throwing bombs on him. He picks his shots. They're short shots, and they're chopping when he's on the inside. He's just not that active on the inside. Overall, though, he's throwing about 60 punches around, and that includes even when his back's on the ropes. So he gets his shots in when he gets them. If he has you out, he's throwing, he's throwing shots. He's fast. He's quick. He's a very good boxer much like Sergio Martinez is. So it bodes the question, why are so many people ducking him? That's another question of the week almost. But when you look at this, when you compare both the fighters, I'm telling you, Felix Sturm has far too much experience for, um, for Hearns. And in that, I'm thinking, judging by this, I'm going to go with a, a TKO knockout in the ninth or 10th round. I'll call ninth because that's when Hearns was knocked out the last time. And uh, if you were betting this fight, uh, <laughs> it's, it's 1 to 16 odds, man, for Stern. Or you're going to have to bet $1,600 to win $100. So if you can put up $1,600, you'll get $1,700 back if he wins. On the flip side of that, if you bet $100, you could win $850 if Hearns was to miraculously win. The odds makers are saying this is going to go the distance, so you'd have to bet 163 bucks to win 100. So, you know, I mean, you'll get your 163 back, but you're only going to win 100 back to you. It's like 8 to 13 odds for the European. I think that's how you guys do it with the fractions. Uh, they, they seem to think the fight's going to go the distance. The bookies do. I don't see it that way. But I've been wrong on that before. It's kind of hard to call the ending of a fight. Because it's boxing and anything could happen. But if you've not checked out Felix Sturm, if you've not seen his fights, if you've not given him the props that he deserves, this is someone that you really need to check out before you just hop on the Martinez bandwagon, before you jump on any of the other ones. Because I'm telling you, this man is as legit as there is out there. Okay? And I think this should be a this should actually be a pretty nice fight to watch. So please comment, rate, subscribe, and hey, it's the big ragu. I'm out.